So this is my apple tree and uh, I've harvested quite a bit already but there's still so much left. Had a bumper crop of apples this year. One thing I like to do um, with my apples is make apple butter. So I'm, I'm just going to quickly show that process. We're in the process of peeling and coring these. So now I've got a big pot of apples that have been peeled and cored and I need to turn that into sauce and in order to do that I'm going to add a little bit of water just to keep this from the apples from sticking to the bottom but you don't really need all that much just a little bit. So now I've got a big propane burner and I'm just gonna cook those on there being careful not to scorch them. Man, if you could only smell this, it smells awesome. Now you see what's happened is these apples are getting soft enough to mush. And uh, I'm just going to confirm that these are all, well, they're not quite to the point where I want them to be with mushiness. So I'm going to give these a stir and cook a little while longer. A word of caution, um, when you're cooking this, you can see it's, it's kind of little bits of it are sometimes occasionally jumping out of the pot and that stuff is like hot and high sugar content and uh, if it gets on you, you'll get burnt pretty good. This spatula I'm stirring this with is not long enough. I saw a contraption in the uh, Foxfire book I'll show a quick picture of that uh, um, works a lot better for uh, stirring these but I don't have one handy. Now what I have to do is I have to get this applesauce, because at this point it's an applesauce, and run it through some sort of a strainer. If you don't have one of these, you can use like a colander, any kind of a thing used to strain stuff and basically um, push it through here and get some of the bigger um, fibrous parts out of there. Um, again, I, I, I went ahead and peeled and cored all of this, but inevitably there's some stuff left behind that uh, is better left behind and not in your apple butter. And here's another method just with a strainer and a spatula. So this is about how much is left after uh, straining. Now the next step is um, you add some sugar. This is probably two and a half pounds and I'm just going to add all of it. Um, and then uh, you, can, you can add more or less depending on your tastes but I think that's going to be enough for this amount of um, apples. Uh, to make a, when this stirs down and cook and um, thickens, uh, this should be sweet enough uh, and still have some tanginess of the apples. So next thing to do is to set this thing to simmering and simmer for a long time until it turns brown and nice and thick. And then towards the end, I'll uh, taste it again and then we'll add some spices. So it's starting to cook down. I'm going to add a little bit of ground nutmeg. Uh, I'll probably end up adding more later to taste of all these spices. Now a, a fair amount of cinnamon. Some allspice. And some ground cloves but I like to go easy on those because they're fairly strong in this. Just a little bit of that. Now you can see we're really starting to get there uh, but if that thickened sugary stuff splashes up on you at this point you're gonna have a burn. So you gotta stay well away from it and that's why that uh, stirring stick is so useful. So I think it's done here. Um, if you, ooh, yeah, see that's the stuff you got to watch out for, that's why I need a longer spoon. Um, but you can tell it's, it really sticks to it real well and the color, you know, it's that nice dark brown color. So now we just have to can it. So this is what I'm going to end up canning. This is going to go into the pressure canner in a minute and I, I always leave some out for the fridge to eat over the next little bit. You get quite a bit from just that little bit of work. And that's the finished product.